get into some of the things that we're going to be working on over the next few days. I want to take a moment to share a little bit about my personal journey. May I do that? Yes. Okay, great. You know, most people look at me and think, she's probably born to do this. This is probably part of her calling. Yes, it is my calling, but I didn't know it for a very, very long time. When I was in kindergarten, I had a very, very normal household. Mom, dad, brother lived in a middle class neighborhood, nice little backyard, dog named Jolie, very, very normal household. And in kindergarten, very, very impressionable in kindergarten, but back in the age when that's small. When things happen to us, we can let it affect us for many, many years. So in kindergarten, I had something that was pivotal in my life happen. I came home from kindergarten one day, just like I did every other day that year, and noticed that my dad's car was in the driveway. And I thought to myself, as I'm walking home, I see that car, I go, wait a minute, daddy's car was in the driveway the day before too. And I knew that every ounce of my being, something was seriously wrong that day. And I went in the house, and I started looking for my mom. And I started screaming for her because I knew something was wrong. I had to ask my mom, where's Daddy? Where's Daddy? And my mom said, I don't know. What do you mean, Mom? What do you mean you don't know? I don't know where he is. He hasn't been home in two days. Do you have the police looking for him? Is somebody looking for him? Yes, but no one can find him. My dad literally disappeared. Gone. The next time I saw him was when he laid in the casket when I was 10. His mother was reading the New York Times newspaper and noticed that James Igo had died in fire in New York. I have a very unusual last name, Igo. My father's name was James. So his mother immediately looked and find out if it was her son. It was my dad. So we never knew what happened to him for those four years. Why he left, where he went. I'll never know for sure. So as a kid, growing up, I watched my mom go from a happy person to a very sad person. She put her big girl pants on and went to work. She did everything she could to keep a roof over her head, keep us in the same house that we lived in, the same schools, the same friends, everything that she could. And she worked herself to the bone. Working 60, 70 hours a week to, put, to do that for our time, brother and I. Really commendable. Mm -hmm. She could have left too. Mm -hmm. She could have said, I'm done. Let the grandparents take care of these kids. I can't deal with this. And as I grew up, I learned things about my mom that my mom had dreams too. My mom used to sing. She never got to live her dream of being a singer. She couldn't follow the career path that she wanted. She just had to do what she needed to do to take care of her two kids. So my mom, through all that, wasn't always the best mom. So here I got dad leaving, and mom having her own emotional blocks and challenges because of being thrown into this kind of situation. So as a kid, I'd go to my mom and I'd say, Mom, I'm really upset about something. And I'd start crying, or maybe something happened at home. And I'd start crying, and my mother would laugh at me. Literally to laugh in my face. So on many levels, I was already starting to shut down at such a young age. I stopped communicating. I stopped sharing ideas because I literally thought that people would laugh at me. And that actually was part of my path. In grammar school, I had an entire class laugh at me as I stood on the stage. They weren't laughing because I was funny. They were laughing at me. I had horrible challenges with communication. Off and on, and some of you can relate to that. I used to giggle after I spoke because I was so nervous. So I had all these communication challenges. And then, in addition to that, I had all these changes, challenges when it came to money and career. Because I watched my mom struggle. I watched her not fulfill her dreams. I watched her work hard. See, you know what my motto became? Work hard. Do what you have to do. Pick a career path that you don't love. <laughs> I was, that was me. I know some of you going, uh huh, in there, not that. And so I had a lot to overcome, a lot of negative belief systems. So can you see that I'm confident when I speak today? Yes. Night and day.
then I had to overcome those challenges about following your past. So I stayed in a career path that I didn't love until my early 40s. Because I believe that's what you're supposed to do. And I had to change that. I had to shift that. I had to believe that you could be successful doing what you love. So how did I get here? Fate steps in your life sometimes, doesn't it? In unexpected ways. So here I am on this career path, working in a nine to five job that I did love, wasn't excited about. And I wanted a little change. I was working as a social worker because I am a, I love people, so that's why I want to feel the social work. And I wanted to change. So I took a job with a nonprofit. He didn't tell me when I took the job that I literally have to do this. Imagine what my thought process was. Holy. <laughs> I'm in trouble. I had no experience. None. I didn't. Besides my experience in grammar school, a bunch of kids laughing at me, and that happened twice. Why would I ever put myself in here in that position? You can either let kids situations in your life take you down, or they can raise you up to something greater. I chose to seize that moment and do what I was supposed to do, even though I didn't know at the time it was going to lead to this. So after five years in that position, I walked away, following my heart, following my calling, following what I'm here to do, and that was a decade ago, and it landed me here.